Hello, everybody. This is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. I'm not sure about the title yet. I have a couple of ideas. Maybe I'll include all of these words in the title. This is a rant, a rebuke, and hopefully more so than anything, I hope it really is an exhortation, an encouragement. Well, uh, I want to give you a few scriptures and a few quotes to consider before I go into my uh, particular issue. Uh, let's listen to 1 Peter 3.15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear and I would phrase it with gentleness and respect. That's quite an admonition to us. Let's look at 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed Rightly dividing the word of truth. It's a, a wonderful verse. It is nothing but truth. Unfortunately, this verse is also the root of one of the problems I want to discuss today. This verse has been hijacked by a faction of Christians. Uh, they fly the banner, rightly dividing the word of truth. The right dividers. But are they really right dividers? Or, as I say, are they over dividers? Let's look at Proverbs 18.13. He that answereth the matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. Wow, this reflex that most people I know have is it really is a shame, as it says here in the verse. It's folly, that's foolishness, and shame. It's shameful and foolish to do this, to answer before you hear someone out. We're supposed to listen. Another scripture is be quick to listen. Slow to speak. Slow to anger. Unfortunately, most of us reverse it. And we're uh, quick to speak, quick to anger, and slow to listen. Sadly, that seems to be the, the default for most of us. So in Proverbs, we're told to uh, hear someone out. Give them a fair hearing before you start answering and, and refuting them, correcting them. Consider their position. If give them a fair hearing. Consider the fact that, hey, is it at all possible maybe you could be wrong? Listen to them. Maybe they will prove you wrong. Are you too full of pride to accept that you could be wrong? Here's a quote that you may have heard me say many times. Remember why we debate. Now, debate, of course, is a, is a word that um, I think needs to be elaborated on. Um, it doesn't have to be a formal debate with, uh, you know, rules and time clocks or we can just say, remember why we discuss or remember why we argue. And arguing is not necessarily a negative concept. 
arguing is just uh, comparing your ideas and considering each other's opinions and, and uh, trying to work it out. And iron sharpening iron. When it becomes bad is when we get in the flesh and the arguments get ugly and insulting. So in this quote it says, remember why we debate. We have nothing to lose but the errors we hold. Who but a stubborn fool would hold on to errors once they have been exposed? Author unknown. I have quoted this many times. I wish I knew who wrote it. But um, so if we're debating or we're arguing and we're trying to work out our difference of opinions on uh, theology, um, remember that what have you got to lose by listening to the other person and considering their point of view? The only thing you have to lose are your errors. Now, if you're familiar with my channel and my 10 years on YouTube, you should know that I have actually employed the philosophy. Uh, as I've debated with some friends of mine on some subjects, some, some positions that I held for 25 years, I, I believed it firmly, uh, I taught it, I defended it, and yet, because I listened to somebody who disagreed, and it normally took me about a year of debating with them privately, but because I was willing to listen, uh, uh, I was convinced that their position was correct. And it says, who but a stubborn fool would hold on to errors once they've been exposed? I'm happy to tell you, I'm not a stubborn fool holding on to an error. People have proven me wrong on some things, and I've realized it. I did not hold on to the error. I was not a stubborn fool. And the last quote I want to uh, read before I go into my grievance is, quote, When an honestly mistaken man learns the truth, he will either no longer be mistaken or he will cease to be honest. I want you to ponder it, meditate on this. When an honestly mistaken man learns the truth, he will either no longer be mistaken or he will cease to be honest. It kind of goes in hand with the, the, the previous quote. So that's the premise, and how does this apply to me today and my grievance that I'm bringing to you? First of all, uh, you, if you've really been following my channel very long, you've heard me say that my primary mission on YouTube, my primary mission and ministry work in life is evangelism. Uh, nothing matters uh, unless and until we have shared the gospel, the good news about the free gift of salvation and the guarantee of eternal life to everyone who believes on Jesus Christ for it. Nothing in, in this Bible matters unless you understand that, the gospel. Unless you understand who Jesus is and how you get saved, everything else in the Bible is irrelevant. As it says in Ecclesiastes, uh, Solomon concluded that attaining the world's riches, the reputation of the wisest man in the world, all the material things, uh, everything was vanity. Everything was pointless. Only knowing God mattered. So my primary mission has been and remains to be to tell you who Jesus is and how you get saved. By grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. 
However, I have kind of been roped into and, and uh, forced to uh, answer other theological questions. I knew that once I engaged and decided to veer away from the gospel and, and uh, go into other theological subject matter, that every time that I took a position on the subject, then uh, I was going to make some people happy and make some people unhappy. Sometimes that unhappiness even went to the level of anger. Almost every theological subject has more than one possible answer. So let's say that there's two sides to each of these arguments. If you dare to take a side, you're going to alienate the other side. Not intentionally, but that's the human nature response. But I went ahead and I did it. And one subject after another, uh, I have studied, uh, I've worked, and I've produced playlists on these subjects. I currently have over 60 playlists on my channel. And that's what this video is really all about. A, a playlist, you probably know, is a collection of videos on a particular subject. So there's over 60 various theological subjects. Now, some of the playlists have three or four or five videos on it. Some of them have more than a hundred videos on it. Uh, many of the videos were produced by me. Some of the videos are made by other people that were relevant to the subject and they're added to the playlist. But what I want you to know is that each one of these playlists on my part a lot of work was put into it. Now, I think it's safe to say that probably a year of study or more, at least on that subject, was, was necessary for me to form a conclusion and then organizing the thoughts and then producing the video was more work. So I'm trying to tell you that a lot of time and effort has been put into producing these videos. And why did I do it? To please myself? No. I did it hoping that it would be helpful to you. Not that I expect you to agree with me, but the information is there for you to consider. My greatest disappointment in all my YouTube time for 10 years now is the failure of the audience to really look at these playlists and consider them. Now, what aggravates me, and that's why this is a rant, is that uh, I get comments from people on videos and, and sometimes it's not even one of the videos on these playlists. It's just per, like the Wednesday night Bible study that I did last night with uh, Sister Renee and Brother Cripps. Uh, you know, we, we discussed a lot of things. Uh, Romans chapter 15, verse 13 through 21. A lot of verses, a lot of different th thoughts were brought up by all parties. And, and every time we go through the Bible and a verse applies to a subject, uh, that is the subject of one of my playlists, I always say I've got a playlist on that subject. Because the playlist, the actual video production that I've made, it may have been two hours. It may have been 10 hours. I have one playlist that is 50 hours of content. It's called 50 Hours in Heaven. And no, it's not my claim that I went to heaven for 50 hours and now I'm come, come back to tell you about it. No, it's a 50-hour study on heaven. Uh, so the playlists are very in length, but every playlist, a lot of work was put into it by me. 
I'm not complaining. I've enjoyed every minute of it, but my complaint is just, it is not, not being utilized. And especially, it's not being utilized by the people who will hear me say something, like last night in the Bible study, about uh, the, the last night was the subject of hyper-dispensationalism, or what I call Paul onlyism And then I get comments, and questions and comments, and, and uh, uh, arguments to say that you're wrong about this, and here's the verses why. And what I do is, you know, typing, texting is one of the most inefficient ways of communicating. Not only is it labor-intensive, but it's very, very subject to misunderstandings. People can take you so wrong when you, they read what you wrote. When they see you speak and hear you, they can hear the tone of your voice. They can see the expressions on your face. They have a much better chance of getting really understanding what you mean. Plus, it's a lot easier for me to speak than to type. So what I routinely do when people ask me about any subject, I say, usually, well, that's a good question. I've already, I've studied a lot and I've made a playlist on it. I hope you'll go watch the playlist and consider it and then let me know what you think. A lot of times I get an answer back from them like, I don't have five hours or ten hours to spend watching that playlist. Just answer my question. Whew, that kind of attitude really irks me. First of all, it's absolutely unfair. You're, you're saying that I have to labor by typing to answer your question. First of all, I've already labored and put a lot of years of study and a lot of effort into making a playlist for that purpose. And secondly, for me to type out an answer for you in a few hundred words is n not going to accomplish anything unless we go back and forth, text, reply, text, reply, comment, reply, over and over again. Now, I'm not going to waste my time doing that after I've already invested hundreds of hours producing playlists for that purpose. So I say to you, how dare you try to impose that on me, insisting that I have to type out answers for you when you're unwilling to get the answers from the playlist that I put a lot of time and effort into producing for the purpose of giving you these answers that are co comprehensive and thorough, complete. And whether it's Paul only isn't debunked or whether it's... Uh, um, it, 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 what is the state of the dead, eternal torment, or eternal death? Or whether it is the subject of the book of James, and the, titled James and Paul, The Shocking Facts? These playlists are more controversial. I'm taking a position that is very likely contrary to your position. And I'm asking you to consider, maybe you're wrong. Do you ever consider the possibility that you might be wrong? Don't you think it's, you're being unfair to yourself and, and me to uh, not accept that maybe I'm wrong, maybe I owe it to myself to carefully listen and consider and completely listen to the entire thing before I do, as it said in the first verse here, I think it was the first verse. No. It was Proverbs. He that answereth a matter before he heareth it is a folly and shame unto him. That's what you're doing. You, you're trying to give an answer, but you haven't been willing to take the time to hear me out. And yes, some of these subjects are very complex particularly in the hyperdispensationalism, they listen to someone like Les Feldick or one of those uh, prominent hyperdispensationalist teachers, and they've listened to hundreds of hours, and they're completely convinced that that's the right way to understand the Bible. Those are the right dividers. And guess what? I've listened to all their videos. I've, I've completely studied that point of view. 
and all of their arguments, I carefully provide a re rebuttal in my playlist. So if you send me something about, well, what about this version, what about this that is covered in the playlist. Now, if you're someone, I have a particular person in mind that's told me, well, I try to listen to your playlist, but after a couple of videos, I, I quit. None of scripture or something. Well, first of all, that's absolutely incorrect because all the positions I take in all these playlists, the scriptures throughout all of them, everything is based upon what scripture says. So I guess I have a couple of grievances what I'm asking people to do. It's okay. On, on one hand, the Bible tells us uh, always be ready with an answer. And, 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 and also have gentleness and meekness, and gentleness and respect in our conversations. It tells us study to, sh to show ourselves approved. Well, the only way you're going to be ready with an answer is by studying. But if you only study one side of an issue, you're not really studying it, are you? You're being brainwashed. And that's what you are. That's what I was. I was brainwashed by Dr. Dr. Peter Ruckman. I've read 40 of his books. He's the foremost authority and champion of KJV only. And, uh, and, uh, uh, the dis dis uh, futuristic dispensationalism of eschatology. And that's the viewpoint I accepted and taught and defended for 25 years. Uh, I was brainwashed on a number of subjects. But I was not a stubborn fool. I, I listened to the other side of the arguments on all these subjects and found that in some cases, the position I was holding was wrong. And I was not going to hold on to an error once I'd been proven wrong. So that's the, the message uh, for today. Uh, I, it, it aggravates me. It's not that people will ask you questions. I'm, I want to get your questions. I want to get your, uh, your um, disagreements with me. It can tell me if you think I'm wrong. But if I reply to you that I have a playlist on that subject and go watch the videos on the playlist for the complete answer, and you're unwilling to do it, then shame on you. You're, you're not really seeking a dialogue. You're not really wanting to learn, are you? If you're not willing to listen and, and give a fair hearing to the other side of the issue. Now, by the way, most of my closest friends and collaborators on YouTube haven't watched my playlist. That is a great disappointment to me also. So it's not just the broader audience, but, it, but this, this uh, rebuke, and I hope it's more of an exhortation, an encouragement. I would encourage everybody to go through my playlist, look at all the subjects, and when you find a subject that, of interest and you see, well, he has a different position than I do. If we were in agreement, there's no reason to listen. You already uh, understand and agree that what the point of view I'm holding. But if we disagree, you should be excited. I am very excited to listen to the people who uh, disagree with me. Except if I've already studied and exhausted the subject. If I've already studied the other side of that particular argument and, and, and concluded it's wrong, then there's no reason for me to go back and restudy it. But if it's, if it's a subject that's a new argument that I haven't considered, tell me. I want to hear it. I want to consider it. If I'm wrong, I'll repent. I'll change my mind. I've done it numerous times. I will not hold on to an error as a stubborn fool if you're proven wrong. I hope you will adopt this same attitude. Thank you for listening. I hope I've encouraged you to go through my playlists, check them out, and tell me what you think. Bless you all. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus.